Hi, my name is Avinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm really happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Lost Ruins of Arnak, published by Tech Games Edition. It's a beautiful game and extremely competitive, one of my new favorites. What I love about the game is the rhythm, the mechanics, how no two games are ever the same. I also find that it lasts just the right amount of time and hits that sweet spot between complexity and ease of learning. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button, it helps a lot. In Lost Ruins of Arnak, you play an adventuring archaeologist, a bit like Indiana Jones. Over the course of five rounds, you discover the uncharted island of Arnak, which is full of hidden sites, items, artifacts and treasures, and dangerous guardians which you must overcome and gather enough clues to discover the lost temple of Arnak. At the full moon, the player with the most treasures, items, artifacts and idols gets the most points and wins the game. Let me show you the components while I set up the game, starting by placing the board in the middle of the table. If it's your first game, I suggest you play with the bird temple side. The snake temple side is a bit more challenging, but I'll explain the rules at the end of the video. Both temples have the shoreline at the bottom where players can collect the main resources of the game. And as they go inland, they encounter ever bigger hidden sites. Here is the lost temple itself. Place the supply board at the bottom here and place all the resources like gold, compasses, tablets, arrowheads and jewels. Shuffle all the idols and place them randomly on the sites. One idol face up on each of these eight sites and one idol face up and one face down on each of these four larger sites. At the beginning of the game, only the camp sites are accessible. None of the bigger sites or the guardians are revealed yet. Shuffle the level one sites and place them face down here and the level two here. Shuffle all the guardians and place them face down here. Then shuffle all the assistants and place them silver side face up in three piles over here. Now take all the cards and separate the artifacts, the items and the fears in three piles. Place them on the top of the board like this. You can keep the fear cards face up as they are all the same and they're more scary that way. Place the moon staff on the first moon face here and flip the top artifact card and place it face up on the left of the staff. On the right of the staff, place the top five item cards face up. Both items and artifacts offer really cool bonuses. Now, for the rest of the setup, it will vary depending on the number of players. For this video, I'm going to show you a three player game. On top of the research track, place the temple tiles, place three 11 on top, two stacks of six here and three stacks of two there. The stacks are equal to the number of players, so here stacks of three. Shuffle all the bonus tiles and place three of them face down here as it's a three player game. Place other bonus tiles face up on the spaces marked on the temple. Place them on the three player areas, but avoid areas reserved for four player games. Return the leftover bonus tiles to the box. Now shuffle these five blocking tiles and pick three of them and place them to their matching space here, here, and here. You do not use the blocking tiles in a four-player game and you will use all of them in a two-player game. Now each player will pick a color and get a player board. Take the two archaeologist figures and the four starting cards here. All cards have a travel value on the top left corner. These also have an effect as they let you collect one gold each or one compass each from the supply. Add two fear cards. They don't have effects and count as negative points at the end of the game, but they still have a travel value. Shuffle all six cards and place them face down here. Pick the first player randomly or by picking a player who traveled most recently to a place they had never been before. That player takes the alarm clock and two gold tokens. Then clockwise, the second player takes one gold and one compass, and the third player takes two gold and one compass. In a four player game, the fourth player would get one gold and two compasses. Now distribute to everyone a player aid and you are ready to start playing. Each of the five rounds comes in five phases and we start by drawing your playing hand. Each player shuffles their six card deck and draws five cards. These are the cards you'll be able to play for this round. Leave the remaining card in your deck here. Then. In clockwise order, each player can take one of eight main actions and as many free actions as they want. Let me start by explaining the dig action. That is where you send your archaeologist on a site to collect new resources. 
First pay the travel costs shown here. At first only those sites are available. So you only pay one boot which you should pay from the fear card as shown in the top left. Later in the game, as you discover new dig sites, they will be farther away, so you will have to pay higher travel values to travel by plane, by boat or by car. Check this chart here showing that you can always use a plane to travel to any location or a car or boat to pay for a boot. Just keep in mind that boats and cars are not interchangeable and that you can always hire a pilot for two gold. So you could go here for four gold. Place the card you've played face up in your play area here and place one of your archaeologists in an unoccupied location to dig to collect new resources. Here you collect two gold, here two compasses, here two tablets, here one arrowhead, and here you also need to discard one card from your hand into your play area to collect one jewel. Note that if a site is already occupied, you would need to pay two boots to get to this site. If it's blocked, then only one archaeologist can reach that dig site this round. Place the resources you've just collected on your player board. Now, let me explain another action, which is to discover a new site so you can go digging for new resources. There are two types of new sites. You'll need to spend three compasses to reach level one sites and six compasses to reach level two sites as shown here. Then you need to pay the travel cost. It's usually one travel to reach level one and usually two to travel to level two sites. Place your archaeologist and collect the idol. Immediately resolve its effect and place it face down on your player board. On level two sites, you collect both idols, but only resolve the one face up. Then take the top tile of the stack of this site level, immediately collect its effect and place it here. Then take the top guardian and place it here. And that's the end of the discover a new site action. Whether you defeat the guardian or not, this site is now another place you can send your archaeologist to dig in later rounds. You will have to spend the travel cost indicated here, but you don't need to spend the compasses anymore. Whether it's a guardian you've just discovered or one that was already there, to overcome a guardian is another action. Let me show you how it's done. You can defeat the guardians if one of your archaeologists is on the same site as the guardian. Then you need to pay the cost indicated here to overcome it. Place the guardian token next to your player board face up. The guardian always comes with a one-time boon. You can either use it immediately or at a later time as a free action. When you do, use the action on the top right corner and flip the guardian. Whether you use the guardian's boon or not, each guardian is always worth five points at the end of the game. But be careful. If at the end of the round you have not defeated the guardian, you escape running and will have to pick up a fear card. Luckily, some artifacts and items let you escape fear-free or defeat guardians. Let's have a look at how you buy some of these cards as an action. All the cards you can buy are on the card row here. Items are on the right and artifacts on the left of the moon staff. To buy them, pay compasses for artifacts or gold for items. When you buy an item, place it face down at the bottom of your card deck. Slide the remaining items towards the staff and draw the top card of the item deck. Buying an artifact is pretty powerful as you get to use its action immediately at no extra cost. Resolve it and place the card face up near your play area. You refill the artifact by sliding the remaining cards towards the moon staff and placing the top card of the deck face up on the empty space. Now let me show you how to play a card as an action. When you play a card from your hand, place it face up in your play area and resolve its effect. If the effect has this lightning symbol, it's a free action and you can play as many as you want. A lot of effects are about collecting resources from the supply, but some are a bit more complex. All effects are explained in detail in the player aid here. If the card asks to exile a card, you can resolve its effect first and then place it face up here for an artifact, here for a fear, or face up here for an item. If you place an artifact card, you also need to pay a tablet before resolving the effect. This extra cost of a tablet means that it's sometimes better to use these artifacts for their travel value and fly to a dig site instead of using their action. Now, let me explain how the assistants work because they're pretty powerful. When you gain an assistant, pick it from the bottom of the research track. 
Place it on your board, silver side face up like this. When you use its power, turn it 90 degrees like this and collect the benefit. When you upgrade an assistant, flip it to reveal its golden, more powerful side. If you've already used the silver side, refresh it when you upgrade it. There's another cool power that you can use. It's a free action, and that's the idols you've collected from new dig sites. You can use these idols to gain those benefits. Exchange one gold for a jewel, or collect one arrowhead, collect two tablets, or one gold and one compass, or draw another card into your hand. When you use the idol, place it on the leftmost unoccupied space here. You can use only four of them, and they will cost you points as you cover these points. The points you are covering would have been added to your score at the end of the game. Now, let me show you how you research your way through the ruins to make your way to the bird temple. You have two markers to go up the exploration track. First you move the magnifying glass, then you take notes in the notepad. So you can bring your notepad at the same level as the magnifying glass, but not above it. The cost to move is the same, but the rewards are different. The rewards for the magnifying glass are shown by this shape. Here you get one gold, and as you go up, you gain one compass, another compass, and here pick up an extra card from your deck. The notebook gives you access to a new assistant here, and a second one here, and lets you upgrade your assistant here and here. Here you gain three compasses, here you get a free artifact, and here you can defeat a guardian for free. To go up one level, pay the cost indicated here, like one compass and one arrowhead to move up here. Then you would have a choice of paying either one jewel to move here, or one tablet and arrowhead to move here. The difference is that you would pick a different bonus token, here a resource upgrade, or here an extra card into your hand. Once you reach the top level, you've reached the temple. Place your magnifying glass on the leftmost empty space. Also look at the bonus tokens and pick one to get its reward immediately. Now once you've arrived at the top, you can start collecting temple tiles, which can give you a lot of points at the end of the game. You can spend a gold and two tablets to pick up two points here, or a jewel for two points on this side, or a compass and an arrowhead for these. If you want to access the six points, you would need to spend a gold, two tablets, and a jewel, or a jewel, a compass, and an arrowhead. For the 11 points, you would need each of these. You can collect as many as you can afford, so it pays off to get there early. Now is a good time to talk about the other side of the board. The main difference is how you research your way to the snake temple. It's a little bit more complicated, so I advise you to play that side once you've played a few games. The key difference is in the assistance, as you now rescue one of them on your way to the temple by selecting the one you prefer. This stage requires that you spend an idol. This idol needs to come from your supply crate. It cannot have been used before. There are as many assistants here as there are players. Put the others back face up without revealing the hidden one. As you find these assistants, they are already tired and you cannot use them this round, but you can still upgrade them in these places. Finally, the temple is a lot scarier and you discover dreadful tales and pick up additional fear cards as you get closer to the top. Some of the dig sites have different travel values, otherwise everything else is the same as the bird temple. If a player has nothing else to do or wants to stop this round, they simply pass. The other players continue until everyone has passed and then we proceed to the end of round phase. Collect your archaeologists from the board. If you have cards you haven't played, you can keep them for the next round or place them in your play area then. Shuffle your played cards and place them at the bottom of your deck. Refresh your assistance. Draw a new hand up to five cards. On the board, discard the cards directly on the left and the right of the moon staff. Shift it one space to the right. Shift the artifact cards to the right and draw two new ones. Once all players have passed at the end of the fifth round, it's the end of the game and we are ready to count the points. Add the points depending on how far you've moved your magnifying glass and notebook. So here it's 23 and five. Add the points for the temple tiles you have. Here it's 11. Then for your idols, here it's 12. Then for the number of guardians you have overcome, which is 15 here. Add the points of all the items and artifacts you've bought. Here it's nine and subtract one point for each fear card you still have. So minus two for a total of 73. In case of a tie, the winner is the player who reached the temple first. If no one reached the temple, it's the player who had the highest research score.
Now, my tips to win at Lost Ruins of Arnak are it's a good idea to grab some of these item cards at the beginning of the game to improve your engine. Sometimes you'll pick up an artifact for the immediate effect it gives you because spending a tablet after that may prove to be a bit expensive. However, the plane they give you is also very useful and it gives you points at the end of the game. If you get too many cards, you may end up not using them, but they will give you points at the end of the game. It's not always advantageous to spend your resources to overcome a guardian. They could very well be better spent elsewhere. Being the first to research the temple can give dramatic advantages and helps win the game. So that's how you play Lost Ruins of Arnak. It's a great game that feels like a race to the finish between all players to see how far you'll get into the Lost Temple. If you've enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.